population that exists within the conference and the world. They are our members, our neighbors, our friends, and our family. They are our loved ones. While we cannot agree with or endorse individual choices or lifestyles, we also cannot promote individual or political agendas. Okay, friends, the following message we're going to listen to right now is coming from Charles A. Tapp. Um, this is, he is the actual president um, of the Pot Potomac Conference Cooperation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He put out a message that is causing a, lev a level of disturbance online about the LGBT community. I wanted to take a listen to that, being a Seventh-day Adventist myself. We need to talk about some of this stuff. It's like you just can't ignore what's happening here. These are things that are coming in our churches. There are things that are happening. There are changes that are taking place. And we should all be part of the conversation, um, hoping to sh making sure that we are staying in where God wants us to be. But I want you to take a listen to the message carefully, and then we will examine the nature of what he said and to see how, whether or not this is biblically accurate, whether we could agree or disagree on some things. Let's take a listen to that. Hello, family. I want to take this opportunity to clarify some things you may have read on social media recently. As a Seventh-day Adventist Christian organization, we here at the Potomac Conference believe that scripture is both our foundation and our guide. With this in mind, we must be clear-minded in the reality of the flock that Christ has given us to shepherd. The LGBTQ plus community is a population that exists within the conference and the world. They are our members, our neighbors, our friends, and our family. They are our loved ones. While we cannot agree with or endorse individual choices or lifestyles, we also cannot promote individual or political agendas. As we have in the past, we will follow the teachings of Jesus Christ to ensure that we are demonstrating His love to everyone. Brothers and sisters, showing Christ-like love to someone doesn't mean we condone their behavior. And most importantly, it does not mean that we condemn the person either. And if we are truly serious about moving beyond the walls, as Christians, we must be willing to take a few moments to stop, to just listen to everyone. Author Ralph Nichols, an expert in the field of listening says, the most basic of all human needs is the need to understand and be understood. The best way to understand people, he says, is to listen to them. Acknowledging where we are in the final hours of Earth's history, we are committed to hold strong to our faith while remaining steadfast not only in what we believe, but most of all, in whom we believe. May God bless us richly as we strive to do both. Okay. I mean, what is your thought and perspective on this message? Comment below. I'm going to share mine right now, but I want to hear your comments as well, and we can keep the conversation going. So, according to the message given by Pastor Charles A. Tapp of the Potomac Conference leadership, there are Seventh-day Adventists who are homosexuals, part of the LGBT community, and they are part of our churches. Okay. That's not a new thing. It's just more prevalent in our society today because the culture is changing. So therefore, the church will naturally be impacted by this. So the goal of his message is an appeal for people to listen, to understand, to love LGBT people. While we're not condemning the people, we do not condone the behavior. <sighs> the 
there's a lot of there's a lot missing in this message. Context is missing. Um, the condition of the people who are LGBT are also not mentioned here. As far as listening is concerned, what exactly are we going to be listening to? Are we listening to understand the person, knowing their past, and sympathize and go to prayer, seeking God's face together? Or are we listening to accept behaviors that we know very much goes against the word of God? So there's a lot missing here. I don't have all the context, and I know this is a response message to possibly a previous message that was either misunderstood or misconstrued and he's coming back to somewhat polish what might have been uh misunderstood from his message get it got it understand but i also see a number of problems here this could be a trojan horse what i say by a trojan horse is it comes with the notion I'm here to help. It comes with the idea of compassion, understanding, and love. Although we are to be compassionate, loving, and kind to everyone, regardless of sexual identity, skin color, that's not even a thing. We know what the Bible says. As Seventh-day Adventists, this should not even be a discussion. We should know what Scripture says when it comes to loving anybody and on any group of people. However, I have an issue with this notion that we're placing the LGBTQIA plus community in a very special category. We got to stop doing that because they are just as human as everybody else and their struggle with either same sex or asexual, whatever sexual things that they might be dealing with does not make them any less worthy of the gospel of Jesus. So we should not be giving them any extra attention than they deserve. And I think even this video, by even putting out this video, you kind of like playing into the hands of that community somewhat. There is this notion the community is being oppressed here in this video, this notion that they're not being loved by the church, which I think the church should love everyone. But loving everyone doesn't mean accepting everything. I have listened to a number of individuals, Methodists to be particular, and actually I went to do uh, fix my car at a garage and there was a lady and she was talking to me about how her church, from a Methodist church, who started accepting a little bit of that LGBT kind of spirit, she said before she knows it, the church is no longer the same. They, they, they were not willing to preach the gospel anymore. There were certain sins that they did not preach about anymore. Sometimes the messages was more for covering and protecting. It becomes a social justice type of gospel message instead of a message that is rooted in the salvation that is found in Christ. There was very little mention of repentance from sin. Uh, the addressing of sexual sins was something that was tabooed in the church. Um, she said it was crazy how that happened a little bit at a time, just like a Trojan horse. You thought this was a gift, but little, little did you know you are being infiltrated. You are being invaded with something that you're not ready to, to deal with. I am not saying in any way Mr. Charles is an evil man. All I'm saying is he might be sincere, but that door that he's opening here with this message is gonna come bite, is gonna come back and bite the church. Like my friend will say, in, in your bottom. <laughs> it's gonna bite us really, really hard if we're not careful with this. Look at what's happening to many churches and how it is happening. Now, let's talk about the LGBT community. Friends, we minister to them the same way we minister to everybody else. Yes, there needs to be a lot of listening. There needs to be an understanding of the person's past, the different factors that are making them have either these, these attractions 
or these um, herited, herit, whether, whether it is herit, hereditary or cultivated tendencies, whether it is some sinful passion concerning either same sex or so on. I don't know all the notion. I don't know the abuse, the, ch the, the, the what's going on chemically in the mind and the psychological uh, uh, impact that goes into that to play a factor, a role in leading a person to make these decisions. I don't have all the facts. This much I know. We should not play around with this thing either. We should not sugarcoat this thing either. We should not uh, look at this like it's not a big deal. We should not place the LGBT community in a special category in the church. We should not be polarizing and doing groups in our churches. The gospel should be preached to everyone and we sinners must be called to repentance irrespective of their color, their gender, their politics, their notion, their position. It is something we should stay away from and we should just preach the gospel. There is no such thing as loving a person more than anybody else because of their sexual identity. I want to make it clear. LGBTQIA plus people are not being persecuted by the Christian church, not in the way that you think. What's happening is there is a pushback. Many churches are accepting LGBTQIA plus people while they know these people are practicing the sin and they are adopting them, loving them, and allowing them to become members and leaders in the church. Listen, that is a dangerous ground. And as a Seventh-day Adventist, I'm sounding on the alarm. We better be careful. We better watch it because this could destroy the spirit of our message. It could destroy many of our churches. Before you know it, you will not recognize the church ever again. This is something you cannot sleep upon. You cannot overlook this matter. We must love. We must care. We must understand. We must listen. But we must preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should not sugarcoat the message. We should not look at somebody's sexuality as if they are special. That doesn't matter. In the congregation, everyone, all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Even the preacher himself who is preaching the message is in need of the same salvation that he is introducing sinners to. But while we are doing that, to have a special group and giving them special attention and giving them extra love just because we got to be careful. And there are some buzzwords you need to stay away from. Even them calling LGBTQIA plus community, you best you stay away from that. Because that is becoming a whole nother movement. Even the gay people themselves, the gay against groomers. There's a whole movement online. They're pushing back against that movement, LGBT community. They're saying this stuff is Marxist, is, is devilish, is wicked. They're going after children. They're pushing pedophilia. They're pushing a lot of things against children that you, ha you are not ready for. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of mental health going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I would say it's best you stay away from the level, the buzzwords, you know, uh, entitlement, uh, sexual identity. Uh, when you hear words like that, I'm going to tell you, you, you better off running away from those terminologies. It's best you don't even highlight some of this stuff. Preach the gospel. And, and if you know a person is struggling with these sins or these attractions, you just... Tell them what Jesus will say. You call them to repentance. You love them, but you tell them what the Bible say and you pray with them. You do not put them in position of leadership in the church because once they become a head, they will affect the body. It's a normal thing and it's not good to do that. And that's not love, nor compassion. And that's not hatred, nor homophobic to say this. Jesus says for Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Friends, this LGBT community stuff has been going on in the church for a long time. It's not new. They are members. I've even heard elders who's been ordained, positioned that are preaching certain churches. 
and again it's a it's a it's a subject that is oftentimes left unaddressed because it's not you know it's a small group of people that are doing this but i'm telling you they are growing though they are growing they are growing like a cancer and and, and the church we ha we have to talk about this stuff we have to address this matter there has to be love and compassion in our hearts of course but i'm telling you don't play with this matter look at what's going on with some of the churches those open door churches to lgbt look at their condition they may have money they may be prosperous but look at the spiritual condition of these churches i recently i recently heard the news that's going on uh in, in different parts of either in yeah in germany um where else i think it's ireland there are a number of countries in, in the, the european nations they are closing their churches in in extreme numbers these churches are becoming taverns and bars and clubs and nightclubs and when you look a little bit deeper into the condition of these churches these churches were dead they were in, inactive in the community they weren't preaching the gospel they accepted lgbt many of them were open door churches to all kind of stuff and eventually these churches lost their powers they closed their doors that's what's happening in uh, in the UN right now. So you don't have to agree with me about everything I said. All I'm saying is we better watch it. We better watch it because we have no idea the nature of these beasts we are handling here. And we better be prayerful, stick to the Bible, and, and tell it like it is, man. Love people. Don't sugarcoat the gospel. But be careful with this stuff. This is not something to play with. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Put your comment below. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Until next time, and as always, remember to look unto Jesus and to live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.